Hello everyone. Have you noticed how everyone is just calling about anything a podcast these days? But there's something deeper happening here and we need to talk about it. You can scroll through Instagram or any social media platform today and you'll see a lot of people who seem to be experts using a specific style. Uh, let's call it the podcast look. It almost looks like a performance, a troupe designed to make them appear credible or authoritative, even when the content might not really hold up. So that's what we are going to unpack today. What truly is a podcast and why this particular style is being used to shape opinion and expertise. It's time to fix your focus. Do you really understand what podcast actually is? Because a podcast isn't supposed to look like anything. It's pure, it's audio driven, and it is supposed to engage your mind without relying on visuals. So what is a podcast? Podcasts have been around since 2004, thanks to Adam Curry, a former MTV VJ, and David Weiner, a software developer. They wanted to make it possible for people to listen to radio shows on their own time rather than as they were broadcast live. The breakthrough came with a combination of two technologies, audio files and RSS feeds. And RSS feeds, which stands for really simple syndication, allows updates to be automatically sent to the user. Weiner had already been using RSS for his blogs and with Curry's idea, they adopted it for audio. By uploading a recorded radio show to the web and using an RSS feed, they made it possible for the listeners to automatically download it and listen to their shows on their iPods whenever they wanted. This combination of iPod and broadcast led to the creation of the term podcast. So here's something that will give you the inner working of what was going through Adam Curry's mind. And he speaks in this clip to Joe Rogan. It's a very long interview, but he talks about his first podcast. Quite interesting to hear what was going through his mind. What What was the first, what, like what year was your first podcast? The first one that you released? Well, so that was 2003, I guess. 2003, wow. So did, what was going on before you? Was there anything? Was there any other? Well, people have been putting, uh, well, we had real uh, video and real, real audio, audio, if you remember. Oh, right. So that was kind of like that. the low, yeah. low grade uh, streaming stuff. And um, But this really made, um, it did two things. I mean, it solved the bandwidth problem for downloading. That was the first. And now that's no longer an issue, of course. But it, it um, put the subscription model into place. Mm -hmm. And because uh, neither I or Dave Weiner have ever patented any of this, it's completely free and open, so no one owns it. And that was that was the mission. I'm very proud of that. That's beautiful. Because you know, otherwise, if someone you know, like you know, Spotify is now trying to buy podcasting. Uh, by buying up all these networks and they'll make it exclusive and granted they're trying to switch from a music company to an audio company but ultimately look at all the applications that are out there that are really good people love them you know the apple uh, podcast app oh, i use overcast i like and it is very important for people to really understand the difference between a podcast and how a podcast works and how this platform like youtube works so I'm going to show you some examples um, and explain to you what is the basic difference. So this is uh, a podcast that I kind of produce. It's called Women in the Leadership UAE. Um, it is a part of a research project, but I have managed to help people start their own podcast, uh, train people how to uh, you know, uh, do production for a podcast. Essentially, you have to understand the difference between when you are watching a content on YouTube and when you're listening to a podcast. You have to upload your podcast to a podcast host. Now, this right here is basically Buzzsprout. So Buzzsprout is one podcast host. And uh, when you create a podcast, you just do not upload it directly to Spotify or Apple Podcast. As you can see, this is Apple Podcast. These are some of the, this is how Apple Podcast looks like on desktop. 
um, and these are some of the shows that I sus I subscribe to. Uh, I mean, I primarily use Spotify. Sometimes I use Apple Podcasts as well. So these are all the podcasts which basically, whenever a new episode comes, it just automatically updates it, and it has all the information regarding each episode. So if you go to, say, for example, Hard Fork, it talks about different episodes. Give it, it gives you an idea about how long it is. It gives you a certain description all of that now people do not upload their podcast directly on apple podcast because the same podcast like hard fork is also available in spotify and also available in other platforms as well so where do people really upload the podcast so they upload the podcast on a buzz sprout something like a buzz sprout so what buzz sprout does is that once it uploads the uh, podcast it creates a rss feed which is, a, which is a simple web link which holds all the information, the title, the description, you know, any other information, the thumbnail, for example. And it pushes that RSS feed to, so basically to distribute it to the various platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, which I just showed you an example, Spotify, Google Podcasts was there, but they uh, close the project. This is typical of, of Google. They start something, they start 10 things, they close five things. Um, but there are many others. So what this basically means is that that's the beauty of a podcast. Once your podcast is on a host, uh, for example, as I mentioned to you, a Buzzsprout, for example, different podcast platforms will automatically pick it up from the RSS feed and populate the content on their platform, which basically means none of the podcast platforms can control it. The control is entirely in your hand, the creator. For example, if you upload something on YouTube, you have your control, your content is controlled by YouTube and YouTube only. That is the only place where your content is. With respect to podcast, where your content does not rest in one place. So it kind of makes it um, pretty much independent. As a creator, you have that freedom. You have people coming in from all over the world listening to your podcast from different platforms and that gives you the flexibility and I think that's the beauty of podcast, I personally feel. I mean, I can share you these are some of the links here. It, it talks about different kinds of, of different kinds of options, different kinds of platforms which are basically uh, you know using Buzzsprout or Podbeam uh, you know to share your podcast. Uh, you know, and th this is an article on how to start a podcast, how to begin a podcast. I mean, m a lot of you might be thinking of starting a podcast. You can go through all this material, and I hope this explanation makes sense to you that podcast platforms are different and podcast host is different. Now, is YouTube really killing podcasts? This decentralized nature of podcasts is what makes it so unique. Unlike YouTube, where the platform has control over, the, over your content, in podcasting, you retain control. Your content can reach a wider audience without being tied to a single platform. Of course, companies like Spotify and Apple Podcasts are trying to bring some exclusivity for their subscribers, but the core of the podcasting remains open and fluid. However, this is changing. Platforms are increasingly trying to monopolize content, just like YouTube does. And that brings us to the topic of YouTube itself. YouTube has recently started uh, mudding the waters by making moves into the podcasting space. And let's be clear about their motivation. It is purely driven by money. They are launching an RSS upload tool, transforming audio files into a static image videos. So now, podcast is all about how it looks like, isn't it? Have you noticed something odd when you scroll through Instagram or TikTok these days? It seems like everyone is doing what they call as a podcast. But a true podcast is all about audio experience, where the content takes center stage without the need for flashy visuals. But what's happening now is different people are creating what I call a podcast-like setup. Not like a TV studio, but in their own homes. Either it could be a rented space with the aim of looking professional. And while some of these folks are genuinely knowledgeable, many are just trying to bring legitimacy to their opinions by mimicking the look and feel of a professional interview. 
These setups typically include a couple of microphones, what we call as a pod mic, some cozy lighting, and maybe a backdrop that looks like a studio. But it's all part of the performance. They are not uploading these podcasts to a platform like Apple Podcast or Spotify, where you would expect to find a genuine audio content. Instead, they are clipping out the most sensational parts of their interviews, often taken out of context, and flooding the social media with them. What's the problem here? This visual imitation of podcast is misleading. It's not about sharing thoughtful, well-researched content. It's about creating a perception. And unfortunately, many people who stumble upon these clips believe they are watching a legitimate podcast. When in reality, it is more like a staged interview designed to appear credible. And here's my advice. The next time you see one of those uh, setups, be a little skeptical. Ask yourself, who is this person? What are their qualifications? And most importantly, is this really a podcast? Or this is just a performance. So let me show you what I mean. I have picked up some examples. I just typed podcast on my Instagram account and I found a bunch of videos which I think fits the example that I would like to talk about. And these are of videos, short videos, where the videos are being set up to look like a professional podcast studio. And it is just a way to make their content seem more credible. Like take, for example, the videos in front of you. It is a perfect uh, setup to make it look a very professional. There's a pod microphone. Uh, this lady is speaking off the camera. Uh, we don't get a sense of who she's talking to. Um, and um, because usually if it had been somebody else, they would have at least cut to the person uh, uh, for a few seconds. And here I wanted to understand a very important thing. Like right now I'm looking straight at you. I'm not looking off camera. If I'm looking off camera, it clearly means that there is an intermediary who is bringing you the video, not you. If I be looking straight at you, then I'm just looking at you. There is nobody between me and you. And if you want to believe me, trust me, fine. If you don't want to believe me, you can just move on. But when you see somebody talking to somebody off the camera, then there's an intermediary. You would assume that this intermediary has done some hard work, has done some uh, research have uh, seen the credibility of me and uh, then have invited me for an interview. But in a podcast setup like this, um, this lighting, this whole setup, the look, the feel is being done to make the guest more credible. Why would you listen to her in the first place? Uh, what if it is um, her friend who had just called her for an interview and giving her an open platform to make as many claims as she wants? Is she citing any research paper? Is she making those claims, looking at some... Uh, what kind of research is she talking about? What kind of uh, study is she talking about? Is there any mention of it or it is just claims? The coffee are my non-negotiables. There are three things that everyone needs to know about coffee. Number one, it has to be organic because coffee is one of the most sprayed crops with herbicides and pesticides. Number two, you should never be waking up and directly having a cup of coffee. <laughs> Someone mentions, I would suggest a fourth thing, try to study more about coffee. Somebody answers, this doesn't sound correct. Your stomach is getting pH one is to three. It doesn't matter. Look at the number of likes, right? Claim is a claim. The more outrageous, but seems credible, why not? Um, there are so many examples. I mean, I'm just picking up random examples and honestly, some of them could be really genuine because there are lots of AI programs now which pick up genuine uh, interviews. I'm trying to avoid the word podcast because those interviews could only be on YouTube. So I would call them web interviews um, and uh, people pick up those web interviews and just sh make short clips, uh, completely take it out of context and then put it on their own profiles. Uh, this could be one of that. You're getting on average a three to five percent pay rise, whereas if you're moving and switching jobs, you can expect between 10 to 20 percent of a pay rise. 
biggest mistake I made when it comes to money is staying at my first job for too long. There is a study that shows... So, so, so maybe if you actually go to this YouTube interview, then you might find uh, a link to the study. But right now, on a social media platform like this, which they are, they should be sharing uh, the study, but they are not. They don't care. They're getting the likes, they're getting the attraction, and that's what all they want. They want your attention. And the more out of context, uh, uh, you know, outrageous, uh, which makes you angry, uh, uh, anxious, and fearful, is what will get them more likes. So it is an attention economy after all, doesn't matter which study. Like this interview is, uh, again, something similar, uh, taken up from uh, a particular YouTube channel. Uh, and this guy does great job, by the way. His interviews are usually like more than, uh, what, like one hour and very long in-depth uh, 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 interviews on YouTube. And uh, these are, again, clips made so out of So if we shouldn't be thinking about exercise and, as a way uh, to lose weight. Just made into short videos, just for at uh, so just for attention. And there's so many examples like this, as you can see. And then there are people who are doing all this by saying full episode on my YouTube channel and calling it a podcast when it is just a YouTube show. Um, uh, <laughs> calling anybody uh, who can make the most outrageous claims, and uh, you know that's how it works. That's how the algorithm picks it up. As we wrap up, I want to leave you with this thought. If you really want to experience the magic of podcast, don't settle for just this podcast-like video interviews you see on social media. There's a whole world of creative, thoughtful, and truly immersive audio content out there, just waiting for you. Whether you are on Apple Podcast, on Spotify, or, or any other platform, take the time to explore the vast variety of podcasts available. From deeply personal conversations to analytical deep dives, from relaxed chats to intense debates. And there's something there for everyone. The true power of podcast lies in the audio, in those uninterrupted moments when you're driving, walking, or just relaxing, completely absorbed in the conversation that goes beyond the surface. So just don't rely on quick social media clips that are designed to provoke rather than to inform. Dive into a real podcast experience. Let yourself get lost in a full episode and you'll see there's so much to learn, to think about and to enjoy when you embrace the true essence of what a podcast can be. Remember, the next time you see a flashy podcast setup on Instagram or TikTok, Ask yourself, is this really a podcast or this is just a performance? Look for the real experience because that's where the true value lies. If you like this episode, please continue to support me by liking and subscribing to my channel and share it with your friends.